All right, we're going to look at the set's homework. So looking at the very first exercise, we have um, we need to list out the elements of the set of the letters in the word Mississippi. So I'm going to start by writing the little closed brackets. And then there's actually letters that are repeated. And remember, in a set, we don't have to write them repeated. So we're just going to have an M in there, an I, an S, and then SS. We already have that. I already have SSI. And so then we just need a P. So there's our set for the letters of the word Mississippi. For number two, we're looking at the elements for the set months in a year. So we're going to have uh, January. These are all unique. So I'm going to list all 12 of them. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. And remember, your set should have those curly braces, and every element is separated by a comma. So make sure that you have all of those in there. For number three, you're writing a verbal description of that set. So 369, the first thing that comes into my head is that these are the first three multiples of three. And there's lots of other ways that you could describe it. That's just one way. Um, for this next one, A-I-E-O-U. A-E-I-O-U, those are vowels. So um, the letters that are vowels would be a good description. Um, is the set 135 a subset of the odd integers? So a subset means that it is a smaller set that contains elements in the bigger set, or it could be exactly equal to it. Depends if it's a proper subset or just a subset. So remember the notation for subset um, has that little equal to sign. And yes, it is. 1, 3, and 5 are all odd. So yes. Is ABC a subset of the set of letters of the alphabet? Again, yes. A, B, C are letters in the alphabet, so it would be considered a subset. For numbers 7 through 12, we're using um, those given sets, A, B, C, and they also tell us what our universe is. So um, looking at this first statement, 3 is an element of B. So we look at B, and yes, that's true. Um, next, 5 an element of C. 5 is not in there, so that's false. B is a proper subset of A, so we need to make sure 1, 3, and 5 are all in A, and that is true. For number 10, is C a subset of A? Um, it is not because of that number 6, so that's false. Is C a subset? We're kind of getting messy. Let's erase a little of that. So is C a subset of B? So is C a subset of B? No, because 4 and 6 would have to be in B, so that is false. For number 12, we have um, C un is a subset of the universe. And of course that has to be true because the universe is all the elements that are in there. Um, for 13 through 14, we're still using the same sets that we were just looking at. So for A union B, that's looking at all the elements that are in A or B. So we're going to have, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because that's set A. And then for B, um, 1 we already have in here, 3 we already have in here, 5 we already have in here. So it's going to be just that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, a union C, again, all the elements in A um, or in C. So we're going to have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we look at C. C contains 4 and 6. So 4 is already in there, but we're going to have to add in the 6 to make sure we include all of them. Um, for 15, we want the intersection. So what is in both A and C? The only element that is in both is 4. So the intersection is the number 4. B intersected with C, they have nothing in common. So that's going to be the empty set. For 17, we want the complement of A. So thinking about our universe is all the numbers from 0 to 10. Um, and A is um, the numbers 1 through 5. So all the stuff that is in the universe but not in A. So we're going to have to include 0 here. So I'll have a 0. And we'll have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The complement of B, that is all the numbers that are in that universe but are not in B. So we'll have a 0. Uh, 1 is in there, so then 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. All right, for number 19, we have the complement of D. Um, so we're looking at a new set now. We have D, E, and F. 
This time it didn't give us the universe. Um, you could make an assumption that it was all the letters in the alphabet, but that seems like a bit much. So I'm going to define my universe right here and just use all the letters that I see in D, E, and F. So I see an A, a B, a C. Um, there's no D, kind of going through the alphabet, E, F, G. There would be H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. And T. So those are all the elements that are in the sets D, E, and F. Again, you could have used the universe to be the whole entire alphabet because it wasn't stated, um, but I'm going to keep my universe a little bit smaller. So when we think about the complement of D, that's all those letters that are in the universe. So I'm going to write out, um, so everything that is not really, you can see the word back right there, but that would be H, S, and T. And um, E includes T, A, S, and K. And so when we want the intersection of those, that what they have in common, then that would be the letters S and T. So we can write those curly braces, separate the elements with comma. So for the complement of F, so all the stuff that's not in the word kind of bath you could see there, we're going to have a C, K, and S. C, K, S. Um, let's make sure, B A T H C K S. yep. And then for D, that is B-A-C-K. So when we say, what do they have in common? They both have a C and a K. So that's going to be our intersection. For 21, we want D intersected with E. So um, looking at D and E, what do they both have in common? Both D and E have an A and a K. So we're going to write those two down. And then we're going to union those with F. F is B-A-T-H. And we want their union. So that's just really putting them all together. And you don't duplicate. So we're going to have A-K-B-T-H will be that set. Um, for 22, uh, let's look, I like to look at the parentheses first. So E union with F, that's going to be the T, A, S, K, B, A is already there, T is already there, H. Separate with commas, if you're going to write it out. But I guess we still have to intersect it with D. So D was the back. So we want to know what they have in common. So they both have a B, they both have an A, they don't both have C, they both have K. So we're just going to have B, A, K. And let's write our set for the final answer there. For question number 23, we're looking at intersecting F and E and then their complement. So basically we're saying not in their intersection. So F intersected with E is going to be the letters A and T. And so the complement of that would be B, C, H, K, S. And we want to intersect that with D, which is B, A, C, K. And so our final for that, they both have like an intersection, B, B, they both have C, C, and they both have K, K, no A in both. So it will be B, C, K, writing the set notation, B, C, K. And for 24, we have the union of D and E together. So let's just put those all together. B, A, C, K is D, E is T, A is already there, S, K. And we want to intersect with F. F is B-A-T-H. So I could write these all nicely with commas and the set bracket, but I'm just going to write the final answer that way. And so for the final answer, their intersection. So what do they both have? They both have a B, they both have an A, and they both have a T. And as I look at that, let's see. Oops, I actually made a mistake here. Um, we're looking at the union, but then it was the complement of that. So D union with E, uh, two little steps, is that B, A, C, K, and then T, well then E, we already have A in there, so S. So we want the complement of that. So looking at the universe, we already have A, B, C, so it would have to have H in it, and we have the rest, so that's H. So H intersected with that B, A, T, H, is going to be just um, the H. That's all they have in common. Okay, so hope that makes sense. So make sure you don't forget about the complement that is included.